To look at the forecast, we're now joined by a financial expert, Jide Ojo. Uh, thank you for joining us on the news. Your, your, your quick reaction, is this new forecast good news or bad news? Break it down for us. Of course it is bad news. Uh, it can never be good news. Um, initial projection was 3.4 in April. Two months down the line, we are now 5.4 uh, contraction. And anyway, it's not totally unexpected, uh, given the fact that the country is um, trying to overcome or contain uh, the pandemic called COVID-19. Even before the pandemic, you recall that Nigeria has a financial deficit in the 2020 budget. Our deficit in in the 2020 budget was over two trillion, and that all of that well, we impact negatively on on our uh, GDP. So, what IMF and indeed, coincidentally, the World Bank uh, also released a statement yesterday saying that Nigeria economy will contract by 3.2. The initial projection was that it was going to grow by 2.1 percent. So when you look at the two Brenton Wood institutions, speaking from almost the same side of the mouth, it then tells you that there is danger ahead for Nigeria. But not, that is not to say that it's all, altogether unexpected. I recall that yesterday, Nigeria also released the economic uh, development strategy uh, where about 10 items was being projected as being a stopgap between uh, the economic recovery and growth plan and the future plan that the government has. So government is already thinking ahead, trying to see that the impact of this COVID-19 and indeed the economic recession uh, does not have very severe impact on the Nigerian populace. All right, looking ahead now, the IMF anticipates that by 2021, the country's GDP will grow by 2.6%. 2.6%. Yes. What do you think we need to do to remain on that benchmark or possibly surpass it? My sister, there is no two way to it. There is no magic. We need to redouble our effort at economic emancipation. We need to diverse, diversify the economy. We need to curb corruption because whatever we do, if we do not contain and curb corruption, it will be like, you know, shelling maize on the back of a calabash or pouring water inside basket. The bottom line is that we need to diversify economy. The part of the projection, particularly from the World Bank, was the fact that Nigeria is about to face its worst economic recession in 40 years because our revenue has dwindled. We are not getting as much revenue. And we do know that Nigeria's oil revenue accounts for over 80 percent of our national income. So what we need to do now is to look at the non-oil non sector. Yesterday, uh, Nigeria Customs Service said they've been able to uh, get over 500 billion out of the revenue projection for the year. Uh, this is June. It looks good that although they have scaled down their revenue projection to 900 billion, they are, the Nigerian Customs Service is on the way to meeting that projection. If by June they have already uh, been able to get 500 billion plus into the government coffers. But like I said earlier on, we need to diversify the economy into agriculture, tourism, uh, in for ICT. Uh, we also need to look at possibility of uh, infrastructural development. Look, look, the, the challenge Nigeria face currently is lack of infrastructure. The, 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 the electricity, for instance, is still very, very low. And we are looking from the president's speech on June 12th. They are looking at Simen helping Nigeria to get to 
uh, 11,000 megawatts of electricity by 2023. That is rather paltry. Look at South Africa. South Africa is generating 40,000 megawatts of electricity for a population of 50 million people. How can Nigeria, the, 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 the biggest economy in Africa, the country with over 200 million population, be talking of 11,000 megawatts of electricity by 2023? That will not take us anywhere. And we cannot emancipate the economy of Nigeria on, uh, you know, using power generating set as we acquire. Look at the number of lives that this power generating set have exterminated because of the carbon monoxide that it exhumes. Indeed. So what, what we need to do is diversify the economy, improve on the infrastructure, and then ensure that we curb corruption to the barest minimum. All right, um, just uh, to wrap things up, the report indicates that Nigeria's foreign currency reserves could fall uh, to $23.3 billion this year if foreign exchange access is normalized. What does this mean for the economy and business overall? If you can uh, give us a response in uh, 40 seconds, that will be appreciated. Like I said earlier, all these projections are not something that is totally unexpected. When you have financial deficit, definitely you rely on your foreign reserve to shore things up. And the more you draw from your foreign reserve, the negative, the more the negative, because you are not putting more to be credit worthy, your credit rating will be downgraded. And that's what is happening to Nigeria with all of these projections. So the projections are assumptions anyway. And we all we only need to take it in good faith and see how we can work the country around it to ensure that we take issues around inflation. Inflation is rising as we speak. Unemployment is at 23 percent. Our poverty rating, we are still the country with the highest number of poor people globally. We need to reverse this trend, this south southward trend. And the, the, what, what, what we in, ad, in addition to all of the things I have said is accountable leadership. We need accountable leadership so that at the end of the day, we are able to hold our leaders to account to say truly and genuinely they are meant in business. But the relationship right now is too cold for comfort for us to say that we have an accountable leadership. Mr. Ajito, so, uh, I'm afraid that's the much time will permit us. Thank you very much uh, for your thoughts and of course i completely agree leadership is the key accountable one at that thank you again it's a pleasure thanks for having me do have a great weekend you too